we are at peace, it's fine, everything is good. <laughs> What? Hey, can you help me from the cold open? Wait, we're shooting that now? Yeah, right now. Weather. Right? Crazy out there. Sorry, excuse me. Sorry, bye. All right, I'm here. Yeah, it took you long enough. Yeah, so so when, when are we starting? We already did the cold open. Hello and welcome to Music To Our Ears, a music talk show where two hosts talk about their love of music and media. My name is Amberton and with me today is my co-host, Angeline. Hey y'all, happy to be here. Well, it's fall again, and here at Oregon State we have a lot of people coming back to school, either beginning their new life as college students or continuing their long struggle to complete their degrees. Lots of reasons for people to look towards the future and to consider the past. A real time for speculation and reflection. And although we are a music show. Um, we thought it would be nice to focus this episode on the coming of age aesthetic and the many different aspects of both music and film that explore this genre. Coming of age as a film drama emerged in the 80s with creators like John Hughes, who perfected the weird science of drama-filled stories and teenage angst and self-discovery. These ideas aren't new as they've been explored in literature. We've got Kill a Mockingbird, a book about a girl's coming of age journey in a place where racism and prejudice lives, or in Catcher in the Rye, a story about a well-off young man who experiences an existential crisis. As present as they were in books, many films followed suit and try to tap into these ideas with varying levels of success. What makes John Hughes' work a point of distinction between what came before and what came after was not the content itself, but rather the audience it was directed towards. Hughes himself said that my generation had to be taken seriously, but now there are fewer teens and they aren't taken as seriously as we were. Hughes, well, sometimes crude in a way that only someone who wrote for the National Lampoon could be, <laughs> was willing to cross the divide and speak to Generation X in an honest manner. A lot of this came out of deep collaboration with his teen actors who provided a critical work to his provided a critical voice to his work. Without actors like Molly Ringwald and Anthony Michael Hall, Hughes's work wouldn't have had the same credit that established them not just as good movies, but as films that created a new cinematic language focused on showing the awkwardness of growing up and making the transition to adulthood in a world that seemed to move further and further away from the promises of the generation before. As important as a good story is, another defining part of a coming-of-age movie is the music. Made even more important by the fact that Gen X was consuming music with a veracity not seen in previous generations. MTV brought a new vis visual component to music consumption from the UK. At this point, American artists weren't making music videos at the rate that UK artists were. With this, many MTV motivated both American artists and filmmakers to continue bringing more visual components to music as an advertising tool. Treating movies as two hour long music videos with soundtracks that were jam packed with modern hits, these hits suddenly gained new importance as they became not just soundtrack to popular movies, but a soundtrack to aging as Gen X crossed the threshold from adolescence to adulthood. This cemented bands like Duran Duran, Simple Minds, and Tears for Fears as symbols of growing up and fighting against the ever encroaching world. However, as the decades wore on and Generation X aged out, a new group of teenagers came with new tastes and cultural knowledge, not to mention the fact that they were brought up surrounded by the internet, which to be fair Generation X was as well, but not to the degree that for future generations would be. And so the coming of age films and the music changed along with them. The drum pads of the Thompson Twins turned into the heady guitars of bands like The Killers. Um, you know, and as this music grew and developed, you started to see coming of age films that were focused entirely, well, just focused on different things. And like I said, the music followed suit. 
Also, the proliferation of digital cinematography saw the creation of a larger number of mid-budget projects, which could afford to target smaller audiences. Um, the films of the 80s about the youth finding solidarity amongst themselves and banding together became movies about teens fighting amongst themselves for recognition, you know, real weirdos against the world sort of deals. And of course, the music reflected this, with indie music that, you know, entered into a sort of new era as the millennium changed over. Of course. Um, now, of course, this whole show is going to be about coming-of-age music and movies. So we've got a great lineup, great discussion um, about sort of moving through the decades and how these change and how the films and music impact each other. Um, but before we get to that, we're going to take a little break, and we'll see you guys after that so we can talk about all of it. Let's do it. Counter a single mean person. As much as you insist that you're mean, Jada. I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I'm... for Black History Month here at Oregon State. you were topping down a little bit, make sure they fit in firmly on top of the sushi and they won't come out. All right, we go live in five. Ready, camera two. And wipe it. Welcome to KBBR TV. Come join our team. So if we really wanted to put together the coming of age sound, once again, we need to respect the works of John Hughes oh, yes. and the ending of his first written directed uh, film as uh, Michael Scheffling pulls up in a red Porsche 944 and the bright simps of the drums pad, drum pads of If You Were Here by the Thompson Twids fades in. This is, of course, the ending to 16 Candles. Of course. Um, the 80s pop MTV sound is awash with electronic experimentation, which meant that some of the most impactful scenes in 80s coming-of-age films were backed by that same music that played 24-7 on cable channels. Over here, we have a nice little sort of selection of the era of course, have our movies and our music up here. Um, of course, big one here all over the place. Once again, John Hughes. Of course. We have Ferris Bueller's Day Off, 16 Candles, which we mentioned before, mm -hmm. um, and The Breakfast, Breakfast Club, Club, which is probably the most iconic. The most iconic the coming most of age iconic. film. <laughs> um, I mean, how can you. That ending, I mean, the ending alone. So if you don't know the fists in the air, what are you doing? Exactly. What are you doing? Have you grown up? <laughs> Have you watched anything? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then we've got the Heathers, which is a lot different from the rest of the movies shown on here. It's a little bit more edgier, but still very much iconic. Mm -hmm. Definitely a cult classic. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Let's get into the music. Of course. Oh, well, I mean, we can get into the music, but, well, maybe this is kind of both, because we also have Say Anything up there as well. Oh, that which, is true. Speaking of scenes that were made by music, I mean, come on. John Cusack holding, holding up the boombox, yeah. playing In Your Eyes by Peter Gay. I mean, what, you know, we're talking about iconic scenes. Oh, yeah. That is a scene that's made by that music. Uh huh. It's completely romanticized music, in my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> didn't this, didn't say anything was filmed in like our backyard practically in Brownsville, Oregon? Yeah, it was. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. But so, of course, it's not just movies here, it's music. It's the music. We're here for the music. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're looking at Boys Don't Cry and Eyes Without a Face. 
Very two nice. pretty edgy songs, pretty edgy pop songs. Mm -hmm. Still very iconic. Very. Still has that synth vibe, that you know, darker part of pop music, or mm -hmm. what we know as new wave. Of hey. Course. And then we've got If You Were Here, Thompson Twins, like you said, mm -hmm. amazing, iconic. Um, and then we got your more, you know, romantic. In Your Eyes, Peter Gabriel, Don't You Forget About Me. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing music here. Just a bunch of amazing, just synth tracks that really defined the era. And that's, you know, what teens at the time were listening to. Oh, yeah. Love MTV. Gotta love it. Yeah. But of course, the 80s ends. Leads us into the next decade, the Ooh. 90s. If you'd like to take this away. Let's do it. A common theme found in the 90s coming of age films is transformation, whether it's physical, emotional, or social. We can assume this is the result of how the 90s became this bridge between 80s and early 2000s, two drastically different eras. To summarize the 90s, it was a time of fear and excitement towards the future. It was a time where all the feelings were felt, hence all the different phases of the 90s. We've got grunge, stoner, heroin chic, to preppy. Yeah, the 90s is really defined by like that sort of um, sort of just a lot of like anticipation, mm -hmm. right? Just waiting. I mean, the new millennia is changing over. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. Right? So we got all this expectation of what's going to happen next. And the music and the films reflect all the, like you said, all those different emotions those associated different emotions. with it. And I mean, up here, we've got, uh, you know, two very different genres being very represented different. here. Yeah. We've got some horror, mu uh, horror movies over here. Um, very much slasher. So slasher originated in the 80s, but I feel like the 80s was very much cheesy with the slasher movies just because effects were, you know, 80s. <laughs> and then we got the 90s where I feel like now it wasn't so much about the gore, now it was about like the suspense and like the scary and what could happen. Mm -hmm. And and then we've got, you know, coming of age, all these teenagers trying to figure out who's the killer, but also like why are teenagers figuring this out? Who knows? Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's a staple, 100% of the 90s. Absolutely. Next up, we've got Clueless. Like I mentioned, all the different phases of the 90s. And I feel like Clueless is very representative of this. We've got the preppy people. We've got the stoners. We've got the grunge people. I feel like this Clueless encompasses all of those different groups. Mm -hmm. And of course, top left here, <sighs> 10 Things I Hate About You. The best. Which, you know, speaking of iconic scenes, I mean, what, what, what more can you get? What yeah. more can you get than Heath Ledger coming down the steps? The best proposal ever done. Ever. Absolutely. Ever. And, and of then, course, it would be nothing without the music. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it. So we've got two pretty slower songs. We've got Linger by the Cranberries and Fade Into You by Mazzy Starr. Mm -hmm. Very romantic songs, two different sounds. Exactly. We've got the Cranberries, which is a little bit more punk, a little bit more edge. And then we've got Mazzy Star Fade Into You, such a romantic, slow song. Mm -hmm. And then up top, we've got I Want You to Want Me, Don't Speak by No Doubt, yep. um, which are grungier, punkier tunes, which is a great way to lead us into the 2000s. Yeah, but before we get there, already there. Let's do it. Well, there we go. There we go. As digital cameras became more prevalent, Filmmakers were more free to shoot concepts that weren't expected to have a large appeal, and so more mid-budget films could be put together, which could be shot cheaper um, and with a lot more creative freedom. Although films like Mean Girls and Superbad were both box office hits, they certainly weren't produced like it. Uh, the music that went along with these films were kind of in the same vein, cheaper tracks with larger sounds that proved to be both brash and direct. But once again, you know, cost here should be no indication of quality. Of course. Of course. Up top, super bad, mean girls. We love it. Already brought them up. So, super bad, you know. Very indie. That's when 2000s, or like as a film, like we started getting into more indie mm -hmm. like productions. And super bad and Juno, I feel, are very prevalent. I feel like, if anything, Juno is a plot that I don't think would have been covered in mainstream productions. Absolutely. It's something that you could really only tell with an indie studio and an indie budget. 100%. And then super bad, indie, but so iconic. Mm -hmm. McLovin? Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love McLovin? And I mean, what's more of a, a coming of age plot than a last, you know, one last hurrah, one last party before you graduate and go off to college? Yeah. And then we've got Mean Girls, iconic. Everybody has seen that movie. Everybody knows the memes within that movie. There's so many. Mm -hmm. And then to contrast, we have Sleepover and Bring It On. Still Mean Girl effect, but not as enhanced that Mean Girls actually was. Right. But the music. Exactly. 
we're talking about, we talked about before, transition, that punkier, sort of edgier exactly. sound that comes over. Mm -hmm. Teenage Dirtbag by Weedis, Skater Boy, Avril Lavigne, mm -hmm. which Avril Lavigne was everywhere. Yeah, like what, the tie over a t-shirt? Avril Lavigne, what can not get more Avril Lavigne? The clip in like mm -hmm. strands, of course. Exactly, and then we've got like some cleaner, yeah. punk rock stuff. Mm -hmm. Somebody's Hold Me by the Killers, of course, Hot Fuss drops in 2002. So good. Um, but of course, we can't forget the indie stuff as well. You know, We're Gonna Be Friends by the White Stripes, mm -hmm. that sort of softer, indier sound that kind of came all over the place and just kind of there when you transition from the late 2000s into the 2010s. Of course. All right. Social media was at an all-time high, and with this, the audience for book adaptations grew, especially with books like Fault in Our Stars and Perks of Being a Wallflower. The growing influence of social media and the importance of the internet popularity became a common theme in these coming-of-age films. Instead of the popular, popular girl just having rich parents, she also has 100K followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Who can compete with that? Not many. Exactly. It does feel kind of weird talking about the 2010s, considering, you know, this is what we lived through. <laughs> these, are, these are all our coming-of-age films. Yeah. Um, and we've got some good ones up here. We've really got, first and foremost, our book adaptations. Love it. All, perhaps indie's the wrong word, but definitely the budget was spent a lot more on, you know, getting the actual adaptations to do the film rather than, you know, the actors. The actors, 100%. And I would say what's shown on screen is, like, the better adaptations. Mm -hmm. uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower, emotional, such a good book and movie. Mm -hmm. Paper Towns, interesting plot overall, I would say. Yeah. But we have the tried and true indie film. Mm -hmm. Lady Bird. Produced by A24, which is now like the premier indie studio and a, honestly a creative powerhouse in its own right at this point. 100%. Um, of course, up there we also have Easy A as well, which, you know, has that cheaper, not cheaper, but, you know, that more 2000s style comedy mm -hmm. where, you know, you get some, some cheap laughs A little more saucy, there. 100%. It's more saucy, but still good. Still, still managed to get a laugh. Still very good. All right, music time. Okay. So, Lord, Ribs. Such a melancholy feeling song when you, I mean, that's like the song you do when you're like driving and you're trying to figure things out and you're going through this whole like turmoil. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very indie. I feel like that's when indie pop really started coming around with Lana Del Rey, Lord, Marine mm -hmm. the Diamonds. No, definitely bringing that like brand new sound. Exactly. That you see once again, because that's what, you know, the teenagers are listening to quickly propagates through all the music and all the media. Um, the Suburbs by Arcade Fire. Mm -hmm. That whole album, it's about growing up in the suburbs. What, what, you know, what experience defines growing up in you know, middle-class America more than the suburbs? 100%. Right, all the, the energy that comes out of it. Current Joys, News Under, Flash. Yep, 2012, really good indie artist overall. But Current Joys, I feel like, has been on TikTok and Instagram forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very nostalgia-feeling song. And then we've got Boom Clap. Such not a fun everything song. On here can, not everything on here can be sad. No. It's not always sad. <laughs> Gotta have something that's, you know, fun, upbeat, upbeat, something that plays in every single mall in America at least 20 times a day. 20 times a day, exactly. <laughs> and then we got Big Jet Plane by Angus and Julia Stone, which is more folk indie song. And I feel like that's when we really started diving into indie folk mm -hmm. on the radio, really, when it became more mainstream, mm -hmm. which I'm so happy about. No, it's interesting kind of how that whole sound just develops mm -hmm. um, and really sort of... I mean, that's kind of the whole thing about bringing indie around is that when you're talking about um, these genres that, you know, were once small but were brought up not just on their own merits but also just on commercial prominence in general, indie is very easy to sell. You know, yeah. it's very, um, very marketable, marketable, very likable. Exactly. Um, and it's just, it's interesting kind of how these things propagate so quickly. Uh -huh. I remember when I was younger, um, you know, a big thing was all these classic rock stations mm. that played all the classic rock, but now... It's indie. It's indie. It's all this new stuff, and that's what's defining what we have now. And it's great to see newer artists. Absolutely. 100%. But anyway, with that, we're going to take another short break here, and when we get back, um, well, we're going to put it all together, and we are going to make our own coming-of-age soundtrack for our own coming-of-age movie. So stick around, and we'll see you after the break. One thing I really love about my job is I get to work with a lot of different people and have a lot of fun with them. 
Oh man, the bullpen, it's honestly my second home. It's always like something's going on here, it's always music playing, but same time it's like that one big family feel here. So yeah, that's what the bullpen needs to be. It's a place where we like to foster a lot of our community, where you get to know people really well, a place to hang out. What I like about Omen in general is just like, it's just like the community aspect. It's just such a fun place to work. I always like to say it's the best job on campus. It's like the one place like where like you could be like radio, work for a magazine publication. You can do everything and like it's kind of accepted and normalized. So yeah. It's just so much fun. I can't stress that enough. Why not work here? It's, it's a really cool place to be. Audio, man, it's it's in the air. It's the fluctuations that uh, vibrate our ear holes and make the cochlea sensitive. You know, um, I just you can't ignore it, and you try to start measuring it, and it just pulls you in. Well, I used to try to play music on my own, make the sounds from my own hands and instruments. And then I started recording. Upon hearing myself in my recordings, I decided I should just record. When you're a young adult who is serious about pursuing media as a career or even a side hustle, a lot of people won't take you seriously. OMN is cool because not only will they take you seriously, they'll push you and they'll give you all the tools to really try to do something special with it and let you be creative about it. And so that's what's been special about OMN to me. I'm Sam Lay and I'm a student engineer at Orange Media Network. Welcome back. Well now, we've spent this whole time discussing the connection between film and music, how you can't have one without the other. You cannot have a coming-of-age movie without having a classic coming-of-age soundtrack. Of course. So, we decided we'd have a little bit of fun with it, mm -hmm. and we would put together our own coming-of-age soundtrack for our own coming-of-age film. So down. So, we'll, some classic scenes we have to fill, of course. Okay. So, okay. you can imagine the opening. All right, black screen. Mm -hmm. White titles come across a little bit. Maybe you hear like some chirping birds in the background. Yeah. The peace and serenity interrupted mm -hmm. by an alarm clock. Uh -oh. uh, 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 flash in, boom, slam down on the alarm clock. Why are you slamming down the alarm clock? Because you hit the snooze button. You're late, late. now. You need oh. to get ready. We're panicking. The chaos. Exactly. The horror. All right, you're getting out of bed. You're jumping around. You're looking for the perfect outfit. You're in your closet throwing all of your clothes around. It's all on the floor. Finally get ready. Where are you headed next? Um, well, I would be headed outside. However, before I get there, I do have to pass the dinner table. And it just so happens that, you know, because it's a coming of age movie, the dinner table is set with an enormous banquet Feast. of food that Whoa. nobody can possibly consume. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm just gonna grab a piece of toast. Of course, why, why would you not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, you're running out of the door. Piece of toast, gone. Who knows where it is? Probably in the bush, we don't know. You're running the bus. Or you could be running to your friend's car because you probably don't have a car, realistically. Or you're on your bike, rushing to school. You finally get to school. Mm -hmm. But wait, what song are you playing? I think I want to, you know, I want to bring energy. Yeah. Right. I want to bring some noise, but not too much. No, you're waking up. Exactly. You're waking up, and also I kind of want to save that in the back. Exactly. You know, maybe there's something more high energy that'll come around. Mm -hmm. so here's what I'm thinking. First, Vampire Weekend. 100%. Right? Something indie, but something upbeat. Uh -huh. Right, so it's got some power to it. So I'm thinking A-Punk. Perfect. One of their best, in Absolutely. my humble opinion. You know, I think it's, a, it's just that nice levity there. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. but, but once anyway. Yeah, once you get to school. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Next scene, all right? Oh. We're, getting, we're getting to class. Best friend's there. What are you doing? You're late. Yeah. Do you have an answer? It's mm. not a... It's kind of... Yeah. Not an important one. Exactly. But anyway, you got the hustle and bustle of the hall. Every, like, you thought the energy before was up? Oh. This energy is insane. Oh, yeah. Right? Because people are running into each other. People are doing stuff. There's, like, camera directions. It's like, ooh, these are the geeks. These are the, these are the jocks, right? The yeah. whole thing. But then, suddenly, in all this energy and commotion, you lock eyes with, who could it be? <sighs> the love interest. Every movie's got one. Oh. Every coming-of-age movie has a love interest. So, you're looking at them. Maybe a little bit too long. Mm -hmm. But then, you feel it. And then they stare back at you, and then you realize, oh my goodness, You've been I've been staring. staring. <laughs> <laughs> Two things could happen. You run away, or someone bumps into you, and everything falls. You fall. Now you're just embarrassed. You mm -hmm. don't know what you're doing. It's a very funny scene, though. Hilarious. What are we playing for it, though? Decepticone by Letrique, I think, is fitting. It's 
I mean, that song is pure chaos. Mm -hmm. It's punk, it's chaos, it's all the hustle and bustle you were talking about. And then it makes more of an impact when you finally slow in into the love interest and everything goes mute for a second. Mm -hmm. It's way more impactful. Mm -hmm. No, I definitely agree with that. All right, next up. Okay. It's been, it's, school's been around for a few weeks, right? Mm -hmm. We've been in school, we've been doing our thing. And then parties are coming up, right? Yeah, it's home, you know, it's homecoming. It's homecoming, yeah. Your bestie's like, hey, that love interest throwing a party this Saturday night. We gotta go. We gotta go. You gotta go talk to him. This is your chance. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get dragged there, but you gotta go to it. You gotta go. Mm -hmm. So you're showing up to the party, the best outfit you could pick out because you probably don't have that great party clothes because you're also just a teenager. Mm -hmm. What song is playing? All right. I think, you know what, we don't have to, we don't have to be like too, um, I think we can just be literal here. Tongue tied, group love. Let's do it. Let's, do, you know, a song about, you know, I mean, take me to your best friend's house. Yeah. It's a song about hooking up. It's a song about doing, you know, doing all the things you have the freedom to do as a teen. The party life. Exactly. So you're at the party. Tongue tied mm -hmm. is playing. Mm -hmm. You're searching the crowd for your love interest. You finally found them. But on your way there, people are tossing you too many drinks. Oh, boy. You're a little messy. You approach your love interest. You probably, one, vomit on their shoes. Two, Oof. cry cry running away because you're too embarrassed to approach them. What song is playing? Well, first and foremost, I wouldn't know what song is playing because this is the part of the movie where I step out of the theater because <laughs> I can't even handle seeing that amount of like embarrassment. Like, it's too awkward. Of, yeah. No, it, it's too much. Like I would actually <laughs> be losing my mind. But if I were there, hypothetically, mm -hmm. you know, it's sad. It's, it's depressing. Sad. I'm feeling out of place. I'm feeling like a creep, perhaps. Ooh, creep by Radiohead. Radiohead. Perfect. Okay, you're crying in the rain. You're trying to find your way home. But you remember, your brother's back from college. Oh. You call him up, give you a ride. Does he give you a ride? Of course he does. Why? Because this is a movie. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> what song's playing during the ride? Well, I think mm, Midnight City by M83. 100%. I don't think there's any greater song that you could you know, be driving around in the rain to. Having a meaningful conversation, asking for advice about how to get your crush back. Mm -hmm. And of course, because it's a movie, we listen to the advice. And it totally do. works. Totally works. And we totally get them back. Is it the best advice? Who knows? But it works. Exactly. So we've got our ending scene, yeah. right? Let's say it's the homecoming. There's a, there, there's a moment where things are said, you know, and it works. It's totally successful. You totally get them back. 100%. We need an ending song, though. We need something to play while, while the credits roll or while people are, like, running off. What do we have? Oh. Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. It's, okay. It's, love, it's lovey. It's positive. Mm -hmm. And it, it fills that, that feeling of, oh, we're finally back together. Mm -hmm. Could I give an alternative? Mm -hmm. Love Will Tear Us Apart. Ooh. by Joy Division. Yeah, bring it back to the retro. Exactly. Because you know what? The coming of age movie, the coming of age aesthetic is, you know, it, it's, a, it's a hallowed tradition. It's 40 years long. 100%. Why not go back to something that, you know, is, you know, is to the 80s, mm -hmm. is basically, if you were making an 80s soundtrack, it's right a there. A tribute. Exactly. It's a tribute to the whole thing. Agreed. But anyway, I think that's a pretty good movie. It's made it's a, a good great soundtrack. Movie. We need to make it happen. Mm -hmm. We need to find the budget. Where's our money? <laughs> Give it to us. Give it, please. <laughs> anyway, um, with that, that kind of concludes our discussion here. Okay. So we'd like to, you know, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for, you know, listening to us talk about music. Yeah, our favorite thing to do. Exactly. And with that, hope you all have a good rest of your day, and we'll see you all later. Bye.